Okay, brothers and sisters in Christ. When will Jesus come rapture his church? You know, when he will come, well, anybody that read their Bible and studied it, reviewed it, analyzed it, put everything together, they will know that Jesus is coming to get us before the tribulation period. It's clear from Scripture. Now, I want to read this in uh, Revelation chapter 1, because that's where people have to start reading. Like if you go to Revelation 6, or Revelation 4, or 5, or whatever, before reading chapter 1, you'll be totally confused. Why? Because the book of Revelation is written chronologically, regardless of what anybody tells you. You have to go by what the Word of God says. Don't listen to man. Don't listen to woman. Make sure that what they're saying always lines up with Scripture. Now, what's the Bible say? In Revelation chapter 1, verse 19, Write the things which you have seen, which is past, and the things which are, which is present, and the things which will take place after this. After what? Well, if you understand the book of Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3, God is about to reveal to him the history of the church, the church age. So, look what it says in chapter 2, verse, I'll start from verse 19. Is it 19? No, it's verse 20. 21. Listen to this. Revelation chapter 2, verse 21. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immortality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. So, unless they repent, if they don't repent, then they're going into the Great Tribulation. But if they repent, they will not be going into the, uh, the Great Tribulation. Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. What does it say? Because you have kept my command to perseverance, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. Now right here, verse 13, this is very important. Verse 13, Revelation chapter 3, verse 13, what does it say? He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Okay? What the Spirit says to the churches. In the book of Revelation, you find the church mentioned 19 times, and after, she's no longer mentioned until Revelation chapter uh, 19. She's coming back with Christ. We're on, we're on white horses, coming back at the Battle of Armageddon. And then chapter 4, the church is raptured, because what does it say? After these things. After what things? After the church age, after the history of the church, the church age is coming to an end at the rapture. God's no longer dealing with the church anymore. He's going to focus attention on Israel. And his judgment is about to fall on rebellious sinners that will befall the world. So after these things I looked and behold the door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me. Saying come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. But if you go to verse 4 what does it say? Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and on the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. This is the judgment seat of Christ. So immediately after the rapture, we're judged, we get the, the white garments, and we have the crown of gold. Depends of how our Christian life here on earth was, the service that we've done to the Lord, it all depends. 
there'll be a loss of rewards and a gain of rewards. It all depends how it will all come out. It depends how you, you serve the Lord. And if you continue reading, what does it say? The 24 elders fell down before him who sat on the throne and worshipped him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, and they sang a song. Now many people try to say, oh, this is talking about angels. No, it's not. Okay? People need to understand and you have to let scripture Okay? You literally need to interpret scripture literally. Let the scripture speak for itself, okay? That's why people don't want to let people don't want that. It it goes against what they believe. It doesn't justify, it doesn't go with their theology. Well, let me tell you something. It's never gone with your theology. The Word of God is exactly what it is. It's God's Word. It's, remember that. It's God's Word and it's not your Word. Believe what is written. Believe what God has said. So, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. Let's see if this is literally talking about angels. Okay? Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. What does it say? And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take what? The squirrel. What squirrel? Well, let's find out. And to open its seals. Oh, so this is the seals of the judgment that's about to fall which shows that the church was raptured before, and yet we're there when Jesus is opening the judgment. For you were slain, speaking of his death on the cross, and have redeemed us. Ah, he's redeeming. He redeemed people. The angels are not redeemed. This is talking about the body of Christ. It doesn't take a genius to discover this house. And have redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on the earth at the 1,000 year reign millennial kingdom. And then chapter 6 begins the tribulation. Like where it talks about, yeah. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death and Hades. Fall with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. This is all literal, okay? This is all going to happen. It means what it means. It says what it says. And it will be fulfilled exactly as it states. <clears throat> so, the reason why I'm talking like this is because people that believe in the mid-tribulation rapture saying that they're going to be taken before the judgment, but yet they're still going to see the Antichrist, the peace treaty, and so on and so on. But yet they're going to be taken at the, at the seventh seal. I mean, the seven trumpets, sorry. They're going to be at the seven trumpet, and then, and only then, will the judgments start falling, which is totally against Scripture. Scripture clearly shows that the judgments are falling with the seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls. The judgment starts here, at the seals, the outpouring. How do I know that? Let's find out. Let's see what it says. Go to chapter, Revelation chapter 6, verse 15, what does it say? And the kings of the earth, the great man, the rich man, the commanders, the mighty man, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the what? In the caves for what? Just for fun? Because there's no judgment? No. What does it say? And the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us. Hmm, now they want them to fall on them. I wonder why. Let's see. Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. And from the wrath of who? The wrath of the Lamb. Now who is the Lamb? No question about it. It's Jesus Christ. Because remember John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Okay. For the, for the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of His wrath has come. And who is able to stand? Hmm. Who's able to stand? It's going to be a bad time. So you see, let Scripture speak for itself, people. <laughs> and this is amazing here too. Revelation chapter 7, verse 2. What does it say? Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, and the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees. Why? Why don't they want them to harm the, 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 the trees or the grass or the sea? Why? What does it say? Till. Till what? Now this is very powerful. Till we have sealed the servants of our God on 
their forehead. Is this talking about the church? Let's see. It explains itself. And I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 of all the what? The churches of God? No. The tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Ah, it explains itself clearly. And at verse 9, if you go, it continues saying, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, people, and tongues, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All, and it talks about all the angels stood around. But if you continue, verse 13, Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these? Remember, the elders are, what are us, the 24 elders. We're in heaven, way before this. This is what John is asking one of us. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these in white robes? And where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who have come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In the blood of the Lamb. We're already washed in the blood of the Lamb. He wouldn't be asking, Who are these? He wouldn't say, you know. He didn't, John didn't know who it was. He was asking the elder, no, the, the elders were asking John, who is this? Believe me, John knows uh, his, his beloved, but he knows the church, man. <laughs> so John says, only you know, sir. And then one of the church elders said, these are these who have come out of the great tribulation. And even here, look at this, verse uh, 9, where it talks about the locusts coming out of the pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of the great furnace. So the sun and the star, and the what? And the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the pit locusts came upon the earth and no earth, and to them was given power as scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Hmm. Only those that didn't have the seal. The church is no longer here. It's not mentioned anywhere. You think God made a mistake? You see what I'm trying to say, people? People are trying to say that we're going to be here, and yet, huh, there's no church here. It's because we're not going to be here. And yet people say, oh, God's going to protect us supernaturally, and other people say, we're going to have to suffer persecution, blah, blah, blah. What makes you think that you're going to get, get away with it? You're just an escapist. You're this, you're this, you're that. Well, let me tell you something. Let, let's go here, okay? Let, let's go see if... Uh, if God protects people supernaturally, like some people teach. Let's see what Revelation chapter 13, verse 7 says. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Overcome them. God didn't protect them. They were killed. And plus Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, what's it say? I saw the souls of those that were what? Protected? No. I saw the souls of those that were beheaded. Scripture is clear. But look at this part here. <clears throat> like I was showing before, in, Rev in uh, Revelation chapter 3, is it verse 12 or 13? He who has an ear, let him listen to what the Spirit says to the church is. Look at here, Revelation 13, verse 9. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. The church is left out. Why? Because the church is not there. Like, ladies and gentlemen, I can go on and on. <clears throat> and yeah, this is amazing. Like, about 144,000, there's no record whatsoever of them ever being killed or persecuted by the Antichrist. And yet, after their mission was accomplished, they were raptured up to heaven. Look at this right here, Revelation chapter 14. Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of loud thunders. <clears throat> and I heard the sound of harps playing their harps. They sang, as it were, a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders, and no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed. You see that? They were redeemed from the earth. Those are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb. Wherever he goes, these are where 
redeemed from among man being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. Amazing. So, so I want to go back here and explain. Remember, it says, the great, yeah, hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of who? Of the Lamb. Now, we know the wrath of the Lamb is Jesus Christ. Okay? And yet, we are not appointed to wrath. Did you know that? Let's go see what it says in First Thessalonians. Okay? <clears throat> Let's just go see what it says. Instead of listening to these false teachers and and even Romans chapter five verse uh, nine, what does it say? Much more than having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through who? Through Him. We're going to be saved by Jesus from His own wrath. Okay. Let's go to First Thessalonians and let's see what it, even in the, even here. Look at this here. Where is it? Yeah, right here. Colossians chapter 1, verse 4. Who gave himself for our sin that he might deliver us from this present evil age according to the will of our God and Father. Like, there's just so many things. So many things, people. Okay, First Thessalonians, I'll, chap I'll start from chapter 1, from 9 to 10. What does it say? For they themselves declared concerning us what matter of entry we had to you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, who he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who what? Who delivers us from the wrath to come. It's clear, people. It's not me. It's not me saying it. I'm just repeating what I'm reading. Okay? And if you go to what? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. Like I say, it was the wrath of the Lamb, remember? So that the time of judgment is clear. Chapter 5, verse what? 9. What does it say? For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through who? Through tribulation? No. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you go to Romans, let's go back to Romans again, okay? Let us go back to Romans. Let's see what Romans says. How many of you believe that you're saved from condemnation? Because these people that believe that they're going through the tribulation, they're, they're under judgment, okay? They don't believe that they're, they're, they're saved or any of that. Well, they, may, they, they think they're saved, but they're not. Because basically they're saying that they're under condemnation still. Christ's death on the cross was useless. It didn't mean anything to them. Because they, they think that the tribulation is some kind of uh, purgatory where they're going to purge away and make themselves righteous instead of the blood of Jesus Christ making them righteous. You understand what I'm trying to get to? And look, what does it say in Romans chapter 8? There is what? Some? A little? Condemnation? No. Let me read it in plain English. There is therefore now no, N-O, no condemnation to who? To those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh. So maybe these people are walking according to the flesh, so they know that they're condemned, because they don't believe that Jesus can come back at any minute, so they can still fool around, they can still go clubbing, they can still sleep around, and so on. You see what I'm saying? Like, Scripture is so clear, and yet my Bible tells me if someone comes to you preaching another gospel that does not match what my, what my Bible tells me, let him be accursed. These people are preaching other uh, gospels. And yeah, that's exactly what it says. Oh, you're an escapist. Yeah, that's right, I'm an escapist, all right. If you actually knew it was coming, you'd be glad that Jesus is coming very soon. Let me read it. Luke chapter 21, verse 36. What does it say? Luke chapter 21, verse 36. Watch you therefore and pray always that you what? That you may endure... No. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things. Not some of them, not half of it. All of these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Like how much more clear can you get it? How much, seriously, how much more clear can you get it, people? Like you study history. Like come on, man. Enoch was taken out before the flood came. Okay? Enoch was taken out before the flood. And guess what? God's prophets, the two, uh, the two witnesses that come in, they don't even experience judgment. The only thing that happens is that the, the Antichrist kills them. And after they get resurrected, and what happens after that? Come up here there. They're gone up on the cloud. And what happens after that? A big earthquake occurs. Like hundreds of people die. Let me see if I can read that to you guys. That's in Revelation chapter 11. So you see? 
they were they were taken before that earthquake happened. If you say, oh, that's the mid tribulation, really? No, it's not. People don't know their scriptures. Okay, let's see what it says here. Now, after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies saw them. Saw them. In the same hour there was a what? A great earthquake. And the tenth of the city fell in the earthquake. Seven thousand people were killed. And the rest were afraid and gave glory to God, to the God of heaven. See that? Like down through history, you see it. Enoch was taken before the flood. Elijah was taken before uh, God poured out his judgment upon the Israelites. You see? You see it all in, in, in uh, what's it called? What's the thing called? Sodom and Gomorrah. He took them out. To go, I cannot do anything until you're gone. But this is going to be a global thing. This is going to be on the world, so God has to evacuate and take His children out of the world because there's going to be no safe place here. And anyone that knows, we are the ambassadors of Christ in in history. The ambassadors before they would declare war on a country, they'd call their ambassadors home, and then they would declare war. And that's exactly what God's going to do before He declares war on this earth. He's calling the us ambassadors of Christ out of this world. And then he will declare war on this world. So let's see about the stupid... Uh, I don't care what you people think, okay? I'm standing up for what the Word of God says. It literally makes me angry at what people say. Okay? Oh, we need to go through the tribulation. We need a sacrifice. We need to be tested. Really. You sound like Islam and uh, all these Jehovah Witnesses. We need to do good works. We need this. We need that. But you know what? I read my Bible over again and over and over. Never once does it say that. It says that Jesus Christ is the ultimate sacrifice. Okay? He died once and for all, past, present, and future, for sin. For the just and for the for the just and the unjust. So where am I going here? Yeah, right here. The post tribulation rapture is a lie. Okay? Scripture clearly denies it. But let's suppose it did happen. There'd be no reason for the hundred and forty four thousand, two witnesses, angels, and so on. But let's just suppose it happened. What's the point of you going up if you're just going to bump into him? There's no point. No point at all. You're going to go bump into Christ when he's coming to war? Come on, man. And yet, what's it called? That means you go up and down, just like an elevator. Therefore, you got an incorruptible body. Okay? Therefore, there's no reason for Jesus to separate the sheep from the goats. From the sheep from the goats. No reason. Well, let's go to Matthew. What does it say in Matthew, okay? Let's, let's see what Matthew says. Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the, what? The throne of His glory. For what? All the nations. What nations? All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats. And this too. So many people take this out of context as well too. Right here. What does it say? Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven. Then they shall see the sign of the Son of Man appearing in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. But what they don't understand is this right here. Look. And he will send his what? His angels with a great sound. For what? He was sending his angels for what? Let's see. Of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from heaven, of, of heaven to the other. How can that be? How can that be, ladies and gentlemen? John chapter 14 is contradicting this here. It says the angels are going to gather them. Yet my Bible tells me in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and on, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and then the dead in Christ shall rise first, then for we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And from that time I shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. And if you go to John chapter 14 verse 1, what does it say? Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are what? Many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. And if I go and prepare a place for you, 
I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you also may be. You see? You understand? If I go away, I will come. Not the angel, but Jesus. Okay? <clears throat> it's him himself. Okay, guys? And plus, listen to this. Just listen to this, okay, guys? This is so clear for anybody to understand. Like, it's Jesus. They're two separate events. But there would, there would, it would be a non-event. There would be no millennium. There would be nothing. There would absolutely be nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Because if you think about it, think about it, okay? You go up and you come back down. Therefore, we're already we're with Christ. Okay, we're with Christ. There's no reason for separation because we're with Him. So when He says to the wicked, "Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels," there's only the righteous there. There, <laughs> there's no one left to rule over because you cannot have sex in a resurrected body. Therefore, you cannot populate the millennial kingdom. I'm going to have to let you guys go.